guys, we are live and we're just going to push it here live into Next Level Agents. Facebook, thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, we are stoked for today. Um, we're going to be bringing some awesome. What are we talking about today, Michael? Influence sales. You got to talk into this because your microphone's back there. Oh, yeah. Influence and sales. Thanks for being here, Next Level Agents. We're going to get started here in about. 30 seconds if I can figure out how to get this damn Facebook and Zoom to work. I'll bring you your microphone. Here's your microphone. All right. How's everyone doing today? Facebook and Zoom do not appear to want to talk to each other today. So um, we're going to just go, we're just going to push this. We're going to stay on. Um, Zoom, unless there's an update. This is a push on, let's just go on Zoom and we'll, okay. I'll drop this in Facebook. Cool. Next level agents later, guys. Ooh, inside, insiders. Let's get a- uh, All right. So let's get it. Take this microphone back with you. Yeah. We'll go hang with them for a minute while I get this thing set. All right, guys. So thanks for being here. Hopefully you enjoy this. We're about to have some fun with uh, Michael Burnoff. So some of you guys joined us last month. Well, no, two months ago, because today's February 1st. February. So we talked, I let Fred come that time. I had to put it like, no way, I can't, I can't do weird that anymore. Without Fred, though. It, it does feel weird. Like I need three people trying to talk over each other instead of just two. But dude, we talked, so we talked about just influence. Like how do you recruit people? How do you sell? Like how can you get more listings using influence and some of the things that you've taught me over the years. And so I thought, wouldn't it be fun to kind of have this next conversation? Like just maybe it. we can build on that because I got a lot of feedback from that. So what kind of feedback do you get? And then um, also do us a favor because if we were live, like we're in the room right now and there's chairs behind you, you can't see them. I'd love if you guys could just raise your hand. So if everybody could in the chat box, um, let us know who's here. Just type your name in. Let us know you're here. Start the dialogue. That'll be super helpful for all of us. Um, there's the chat box. I'm going to make sure we got the yeah. Let chat me know. Box open. Do me a favor. Hi, Monica, by the way. Perfect. Monica. What's up, great. Monica? Not only did Monica give her name, but she told me a location. Hey, Deneen, what's going on? Social security number. And uh, yeah, feel free to put in blood type, last four of your social. Blood and, type. Uh, billing zip code, please. The only thing we won't take is politics. Got to go to Facebook for that or Twitter. We're going to avoid that. <laughs> Awesome. We got Lucas in Texas. Jessica, how's it going in Utah? What's up, Justin and Katy, Texas? You know some people in Katy, Texas. Yeah, Katy, Texas. Yeah, we so love Katie, Texas. Right on. And uh, teachers, great, best hashtag ever, Monica. So, um, guys, do me a favor. I'm gonna go post this inside Next Level Agents later. Zoom and Facebook. We're having a little thing. Um, when you see me do that, and that's gonna happen today. Go tag a friend that's, I don't care if they're at your brokerage or a different brokerage, but someone who you care about who you think might get something out of learning more about sales and influence. And before we even go into that, one of the things I want to talk about is how some of the things you've taught me about sales and influence, I've actually just used influence myself more than anything else. I was going to bring it up. I didn't know, I know if you want me like to bring the, it up. Yeah, because that's like- I the, asked you to go to lunch and you immediately- That's your, treaty, yeah, that's yeah, your like yeah. sneaky little trick sneaky. is like, yeah, I'm going to teach you how to do sales and influence people. And what happens, you end up learning these awesome tools to influence yourself. Yep. That, that's the, that's like the, the secret weapon. So I'm going to do two things. Uh, we got a whole studio set up. So I'm going to talk directly to you, but then I may just ignore you and talk to Kevin. Fair. So I just want to tell you, if I do this, it's nothing personal. I'm just getting used to the, uh, the pivot. This is perfect chairs. This is, yeah, so what's interesting is everything that we teach, this is, this is what's crazy because I get privy to my daughter's education now because she's at home, yes, like a lot do. of people are. So you get to see what kids are learning. And I cannot find one class where they taught communication or influence, like how to get yourself interested in doing something or doing anything. So it's like teachers, if teachers just, we started there, were master communicators, not talkers, not speakers, master communicators, our kids would love learning. Cause like the only reason you yeah. like learn, cause have you ever had a teacher before? Like name me, okay, we're just gonna have total ADD. Name me a teacher you had. I'll say Mr. Kraft for my class. And I'll tell you why later. Who was the teacher you had in high school, elementary school? And you guys type it in the box also. The one teacher you had out of all of your career of being a student, cause I know you went to high school for 19 years, but um, give me the one teacher from first grade to senior year that was like, the best. the best like it's interested the, easy, not sex ed but the best miss hoffmeyer fifth Why? grade. what you do she's amazing she made me feel amazing she was just the nicest most caring teacher and um you know what even though i was in fifth grade when you asked me that now yep um 
she cared about what we thought and she made it, she helped us to think. I think she asked us a lot of questions too. Yep. And it wasn't just, I mean, this is teaching not just school, but like even classes I might go to now where someone's just telling you the information. It, and that was never what happened in her class. Got it. So you're saying even as an agent, because I know we could talk recruiting and selling and all kinds yeah. of stuff, all kinds of agents, all kinds of places. Um, that strategy, a lot of people ask a very surface question. You ask like, so what kind of house do you want? Instead of like, okay, three years from now, 10 years from now, yes. you're going to be living in this house. What is your life going to be like then? You got a seven, eight year old now. Yeah. You're going to have a 17 year old. Are you buying the house for the 17 year old or are you buying it for the seven year old? Now we don't want to scare people because I don't want that feeling yeah. like don't do that to people because their kids grow up quickly and it freaks you out. But what's interesting is the teacher cared. Like Mr. Noddle was my fifth grade teacher. Okay. And Mr. Noddle, I have no idea where we're going with this, but it'll be helpful we'll for figure all of you. It out. Is he he motivated us. So we used right. to have on the board, like if we were good and behaved, we got a letter on the board. So one day it would be like ice cream pass. You get an I if we were good one day, the next was a C. One of us assignment pass. So we loved doing it was ASS on the board, right? So we, we were bad for days just to so get an ass on the board and he caught on and he, he had to fix Finally. it. But, but he understood motivation. He understood what motivates another person to take action. And that's really what this is about. So like every area of life requires influence. For some reason we get into sales and business and we think now it's time to learn influence and sales. You need that stuff on the playground. You need it, like you said, yeah. diet. Like you, you were reading our, our book, and I, I asked you to go to lunch. Do you, you discuss this stuff with your people? Because I, I, I asked you to lunch. I do. Yeah. I was taking you to a salad place. I'm like, do you want to go get salad with me? And you said, I said, no, I can't. I'm, I'm fasting today. So Monday is one of my fasting days. Commitment. Week. Yeah. So and it was so fat. Like I will not bore anybody with this to, with a long story of the health journey. That said, I've known all about fasting. Great. Thank you. And you sent me an advanced copy of this book like early May last middle of May. Before it came out, I remember I read it and I, I don't even think I was more than two or three chapters in and I was like, I gotta do something to challenge myself mentally because of what I was reading in this book. Like, dude, the, the goal score story yep. in here, if you haven't read the book, read this freaking book. No, a lot this is not a pitch book. for the book, it's just the concept. It's, um, the book's influence in itself. Yeah, and so I read it and I was like, I started feeling like I really need this challenge. I'm feeling like my average sucks right now. Yep. And the only thing I could think of that scared me mentally was fasting because of all of the crazy things I've done and I'll try anything. Like our friend Luke was just here making fun of me for using a red light. Like I'll, I'll do anything, right? Luke likes to make fun of us. He does, he does. He's a total skeptic of pretty yeah, much everything. everything. He doesn't like Kitty Texas. But he, I'm so just I he decided to, to fast one day for 24 hours because in my, 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 my mind, I was like the hardest thing ever. So fast forward, dude, I, I, I've dropped about 70 plus pounds since then. Um, which is influence and this is like it was influence on myself and this is something i should have known because in 2012 you taught me i need to sell to myself through referrals yep. and i've done that like i got fasting through referrals but there was something about this book that triggered that for yep. me and i was able to influence myself to do something different than anything else and it, it's had such a waterfall or domino effect over the last six, seven months, however long it's been now. That's, that's huge. And I just found out about this a couple minutes ago. I like hearing him say it again. I, this is what's interesting about sales and influence is a lot of people are looking for a script and a line. Yes, I've got that. For sure. The biggest influence you have is you got to accept one thing. What you do currently, I know we've heard this a million different ways. What you do currently, what you've done up till now, that's great. You keep on doing it. It gets you what you have, give or take about five or 10%. So if you want to have about the same year as last year, you know how to do it. Stop working so hard. Push yourself a little bit and everything's going to be okay. If you really want to blow up your stuff, you really got to look and go, how can I do this different than I'm doing? So I don't know how we want to do this. You want to start chatting. They could bring stuff up in the group. Do we need to add them? Do they add themselves? Yeah, do, can they guys, bring a friend? Can it, they invite somebody? They can. They can get. They could reg, They can send the registration link out and someone like, could literally register and join in progress. If you have an agent that works directly with you or a friend in a comp competitor company that you owe it to them, I can guarantee you in the next 30 minutes, you're going to get at least two techniques. I'll give you 20. We're going to give at least 20. Fact. Um, two techniques that will impact your bottom line, sell at least one extra property, if not 10 this year, depending who you are, and make your team have more fun or lose weight, feel better, whatever. So take 30 seconds, open up your phone, send a text message. Um, we're going to share this later. I got it. But send a message to somebody you care about with a title company, with a mortgage company, yes. who else? real estate. Um, it could be an insurance salesman. I don't yeah. care. Somebody that could better their life because that's one of the greatest gifts. That's why you send gifts to people. This is a gift. Absolutely. Give them knowledge. 
Well, honestly, like, so I gave this, I gave your book as a gift to quite a few of my friends because it made such an impact. And the best, I was telling you this just beforehand, it was like, the best thing was like, I gave it out as a gift because I wanted to share it. Cause I know, I believe in your work and Thank you. it made such an impact on me. Um, and so, and it's easy to read a book, like people, especially realtors, like we all love to read books, this right? made for ADD so, people. So I sent this out and I've had more people than you could imagine who actually read it, but took action on it and it yep. made a big impact. And so that was awesome. And uh, so, yes. That's it's a form of influence is having the courage to influence yourself to give whatever it is. And you give some cool stuff out too. I do. I yeah. get this much package too. I like I like it. to. Yeah, I like I, the cards. Yeah, really, you like that one? A lot. A nice. Lot. So, so what's going on? February 1st, uh, 2021. Yeah. What's going on in the real estate world? Uh, how do we help people? What are they thinking? What's happening? And think your questions. Be ready. Those of you that just jumped on, let us know who you are. But be thinking of any situation. You could type it in the box what your problem is or what you're dealing with. And I promise you, if you do that, it's going to work in a big way. So, um, so why don't you get started? You think for them. Channel them. Here's channel where, them, Kevin. Here's where I want to start. Two things. Because... We are in, so we're in the most challenging real estate market we've ever been in in Phoenix that I've, in my 14 years. Where are the houses? There's exactly where are the houses. They're not for sale. I can tell you I that. I found one. And so that's kind of what it's like. You could, I, I always joke and say you could deposit a listing agreement at this point in your bank account. So I think, a, I know for a fact, we as a, an industry are having a hard time helping people move forward. Okay. Even people that want to sell. Okay. are not selling because they are stuck in, well, what am I going to do? Am I going to be able to buy? There's so many different factors. Yep. And I think that's a challenge for us these days. It's what I'm hearing constantly and seeing. Is anybody dealing with this? Do give us a yes or a no uh, in the box. A, to check if the box working or two, let us know. Uh, Kevin, yes, uh, I'm getting this. Makes sense. Yeah. Just because we want to make sure we're headed the right direction because this only could be a Kevin problem. But I doubt it. So let us know. Yes, yeah. Fred, Fred right. whatever you Mina, problems you have. Yes. Fred, Fred just got problems. Fred's got my problems too. Yeah, He's got Fred, yeah, Fred, half, half my problems are his problems. Okay. Fred, All right. Fred and Mina. Okay. Mina too. So you get it. You're having that in Texas as, a, as well. Illich, I, I don't know if you're still on. scary. Slaughter? Um, she That's will. Dangerous. She slaughters it too. She's dangerous. awesome. One of the best agents I know right. in all of Texas. So tell and, me more about this. And and so I know that we're just having a hard time with our with with our influence in our appointments. It's not like people aren't going on listing appointments. And they're not, it's not like we're not getting to okay. the kitchen table, if you will, but clearly there's not enough conversion, right? There's not enough influence to help people through their process. Okay. So what is the big win right now? So back when I was a kid, I want to make sure I'm correct. I'm, when I was a kid, you bought the biggest house you could afford because it's going to go up in value. Not when I was a kid. I did. Right. My parents did. Yeah. Yeah. You buy a house, the so biggest one you can afford, biggest, investment, gonna, of biggest investment in your life. You can live for 30 years. That was the story. So let's just get clear story the story was in the 70s the bank's going to buy a house with you yep in the next 30 years it is going to be paid off it will be three times the price eventually you'll sell it you may die there get buried in the backyard whatever it is going to be you don't have to be morbid but you know what i'm saying yeah, totally. um that is going to be the story and that was a story until probably 2005 does that make sense yeah. or even 2002 that was a story then Robert Kiyosaki and stuff comes out and he goes, yes. screwed everybody up. Stop buying houses. It's not a good investment. And then the story kind of changed, right? Yeah. It's don't own the biggest house, also own some rental properties. And it bred a whole for real estate agents because Anthony, who we both know, yeah. he became two type agent. I sell really big, cool houses in the foothills. And they also sell little teeny $80,000 things to the Russians that want to buy stuff or whoever. He always said this one Tucson Russian guy that bought everything. Anthony, you know De Anthony yeah. definitely knows that guy. You, you know what I'm yeah. talking about? You know the guy? Okay. And he, he'd sell to them. So his story as an agent changed. I do two things. I, I help an investor and I help families that want to move into houses. So the story changed at a BNI meeting, like what you do, right? What is the story now? Like, I know what it is as we're discussing this right now. So there's a story you tell you and the story we need to resell them. Because in my opinion right now, like I could date this thing. I don't know if I should, I'm not gonna mention specifics, but pods quite possibly seven days ago, I might've got information that it was a good idea to buy certain stocks and I did. And they went up in value tremendously. Right. That was a good idea for that day. That is not a long-term play. I went in, got out, did, got out, did my thing, right? That's not investing. Do you know what I'm saying? That was quick, quick game, gambling, speculating, yeah. making a couple of bucks. Right now, I would call it a quick win market. Like we got Mike right here, right? Yep. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike bought a house. How long ago, Mike? Three years ago, bought a house, turned two years worth, three years, four years worth of income on a house. Am I correct? In a matter of minutes, moved, fixed up something else, 
pocket the money, sit on it, different story. Wow. So, so the question is now is, are we telling the appropriate story to our people? Because they're not doing it. You're, you're still thinking 1970s agent, where are you all going to find the perfect house, the perfect school? It's like, no. How do we make some quick cash and put you in the right place? Okay, so, so let's do this. So yep. uh, I like that. And what the other thing we hear a lot, I get questioned all the time, not just from, from I'll call it consumers, but other agents and brokers is, well, yeah, the, the market's got to crash soon. Everyone's just sitting around waiting for a crash. Remember when we met like 07, 08? There's no such thing as a crash. Yeah. And this is the way thing we want to tell you. And then when someone says crash, we want to recalibrate with people. So my favorite thing to say when I work with people and folks, you're going to want to stay on the entire time. We're going to go to the full hour. I can guarantee I can feel it already. Um, this is going to be great. So when someone says to me something is expensive, I always say to them, it's not, it's just unexpected. Someone says, I was expecting to spend 500 on a house. Uh, you're telling me it's 600, it's expensive. It's not, it's unexpected. You didn't realize you needed this. So I use that word quickly. Expensive, not, not expected. It, it is not expected. Okay, so the it. house is not expensive, the one they want. It's not expected that you knew you needed this. Got we it. just might have to fill a little more paperwork. It's no big difference. We got to get you the house you want. Now, let's talk about the word crash. Housing markets do not crash. Crash is a marketing term. We got to correct people. So tell me the market, tell me I'm worried about the market crashing. You're worried about the market you crashing? You tell me that. Michael, I, well, the thing is, I'm worried about the market okay. crashing. So I've been in real estate now for 10 years. Okay. There is no such thing as a market crash. That is a marketing term. And okay. that is a term the media uses to intimidate people out of the market. What happens is the market recalibrates. So are we concerned about it crashing or recalibrating? Because your house will never go to zero. Crash means to the ground zero. And if that happens, we're all in trouble. So what happens is you rest somebody assured. There's not an agent in America or anywhere watching this has ever said that before. So when someone says, I'm just gonna wait for the crash, say there's no such thing. There's a recalibration and there is ups and downs. And most people don't recognize that houses are investments. And because there's investments, there's swings upswings and downswings. So if you want to tell me you're concerned about a downswing, I'll have that conversation with you. Crash means it's worth zero burn to the ground. You see what I just did? That's I eliminated complete. a massive fear and I just gave them a slight hesitation. There's a big difference between massive fear and slight hesitation. If you believe you could say what I just said, give me in the box. Yes, I could say it. I'll speak for Fred. Of course, Fred can say that. What did you get from that? Because that's massive. First of all, that's just a sh that is, I should know that like simple shift in language because I saw what you did is you took a concern that was like a 10 out of 10 and you, you made took, it like a two out of 10. Yes. Which is way easier to overcome and move forward with. Yes. So what people do, what the media does, they take something little and they make it big. If you want to be paralyzed by something, make it big. If you want to move ahead, you make it small. So we want to take something large and shrink it. So as agents, we don't it. shrink and we need to expand incredible things like where it's kind of school district you want. Not only a great school district, your kid learns how to pay attention. They feel better. You save money. Like, look, this school district that you're going to move into has a potential to get you better scholarships, which means less money for college. So not only investing in a house, you've got an opportunity to get your kid a scholarship. So now the house becomes more valuable. We're expanding the school district. Something like only two and a half bathrooms, we need to shrink that shit. Does that make sense? Not All right, say so shit, but like literally, this is this is the media then. Like if it's if it's good and we know it's something they want, we we, we expand. <laughs> if it's something that's small, if the fear of crashing, we make that smaller. Yes, yes, you, you shrink things. So like I always say, like you make a mountain out of molehill. Does that make sense? Yep, totally. You wanna make a, you wanna make a molehill out of a mountain. So when people are like worried about something, so Randy says gold right there. Randy's That's a smart it. guy. Randy's he smart. Knows. You're, you're getting it. Randy. I know Randy. He so really Randy, in guy. your brain, you want to be like, I, I do Krav Maga. And when somebody does a certain move, I do another move back, right? Right. You're going to become me one day. And what, what's interesting, you'll love it. Um, and it, it, there's a sign on the door, genius marketing. It says, um, please take off your shoes. We keep clean mats, but we do dirty fighting. That's, it's, it's, uh, it's all about quick violence. And I like out. it. But, um, but what's interesting, but, but that's marketing. So what you want to do with people is you want to so easily take a word. When you hear the word crash, you don't correct them. Say, I totally see why you might say that. We don't look at it as a crash. What we do is we educate people because part of my job as an agent is to be a coach, to educate people on the investment side of real estate. There's two things, the purchase side, the selling side, and the investment side. All homes are investments. So there's swings. Everybody wants to buy on the up, but it's always gonna be down. Depends, are you gonna live here for a week? Or are we gonna live here long-term? It's gonna be down.
All right, have a, so you just you just brought another question. By the Go way, someone it. wrote something in the Q&A a box. Got, I'll, Do me a favor. Don't put it in the Q&A box. Put it in the chat box I mean, for I can us. pop that up It's just us. a lot easier for us like, to see just, it. Just let's see that one. So the one thing that, the, that the, I want to ask oh, now I just got a yes. is when you say – when you say that, like last, I'm thinking back to our last conversation yep. when Fred was here, right? And we talked about people's identity. It was better with Fred. It, yeah, I'm don't just say kidding. that because he just heard you say it. Now he's all ego. day long enough to deal with that the rest of the day. So the rest, like it's not great. identity, people go, I'm not an investor. Like my home that I live in is an investor. But so let's say Anthony. So like Anthony wants to take his clients and help yep. them gain wealth through real estate investing. Guys, do me a favor. If you've ever wanted to help your clients go from owning just their own home that they live in to now owning a rental property or some sort of investment, but they see themselves as not an investor. They have this identity. Remember you talked about being trapped by your own yep. identity. Is that something that we can, that we can work on too when their people are like, I'm not sure, but they know you don't to have to thing. think of it yourself as an investor, but you're going to be playing with an investment. And that's one of the things you want to say to people. So you may not be looking at this investment, but you are playing with an investment. And maybe people aren't clear with what an investment is. An investment is an asset that has the potential to go up or down in value. Does that make sense? Yes. So in order for an investment to go up, it has to have the potential to go down. Like you only have sunlight because you have a dark night. Do you right. understand that? Yeah. If you don't have nighttime, you don't have daytime. So what we need to teach people is we need to say to things, do you know what the biggest challenge is being a real estate agent is today? It was not there years ago. Is the story is different. People's needs are different. Their desires are different. So my question is, are we planning on staying in this house? Like what, like we need to, it's not just sales. Like, so you say you're running into people. They don't want to get out of their property. They're scared to get out of it. They're scared to get out of it because they don't know where they could pot. They think, man, there's no houses for sale. Like where would I go? There's no houses for sale. Or it's harder. It's harder. Okay. When, as agents, we have to stop saying there's no houses for sale and we got to stop that story. Cause bullshit, you know, it's bullshit. There's houses for sale. And every how many houses are going to sell today? Thousands, right? How, the title Damn. companies have people. Yeah, there's still stop, there, There's no inventory. We yeah. have to stop saying there's no inventory, and we have to stop saying working out's hard. We have to stop saying things that make no sense. If you want to succeed, you are going to say things like the inventory is different than it used to be. There's ups and downs Shit, in the inventory, and, but there's also builders out there. This is what's crazy. Construction is booming right now. Things are happening. Things are changing. People are shifting. Stuff's going on. So we need to shift people's perspective. So us as agents, we need to influence ourselves. So we got to stop saying there's no inventory. As long as you say no inventory, you just limited your income. So, hey, folks, how many of you want to limit your income? Just walk out there and say there's no inventory. And that's like leads are bad. You don't get the Glen Gary leads. Yep. Yeah, you get the Glen Gary leads. Yep, so, um, so the point is, we as, we as humans, we need to say to ourselves, first look in the mirror and go, it's different. It's not even difficult. It's different. It's just different. Because how much like money it. you make? I mean, my, my house is not worth that much. I saw you sent me. I'm like, yeah. I'll get that much, but it ain't worth that but much. But it's not worth that much. Yeah. So the question is, what do you want to do? So, um, and also that, it depends lifestyle. Has your lifestyle changed since you bought this place? Well, yeah. Have you considered um, how that impacts you? These are important questions. It's getting people out of their current way of thinking. So, so keep going. I'll be quiet. All right. So, for so a minute. I want to shift this because I talked about sales and influence. I know there's a lot of folks on here too who also either are recruiting agents to their team. Yep. Maybe they're their brokerage recruiter. Maybe they're at eXp like I am and they, yep. they recruit their peers uh, to the company as well. Something you mentioned when you said, we, like, um, we got to make what's bad small, yep. make what's good yep. big, right? Yep. That same thing works with with say recruiting right and sometimes when you're recruiting other people you need to make what they thought was good really bad um with the current situation because people settle we need to take their settle and make their settle really really bad if you want to shift them now is it really making it bad or are you just showing them like what you're, they're you're settling a spotlight for? on it you're putting a spotlight on it and, and that's the thing like i i had no idea like until recently i thought about a couple things to myself and i said um am i living my life that i want now or am i living what was a good idea prior and that's it's an interesting thing. I have that realization. I teach this stuff. I think it. And then I look in the mirror and go, God, I was doing really, really great compared to other people. Wait a second. What are these people doing these days? Like, am I missing something? Like my plan has been outdated um, by a lot. And if my plan's outdated, for sure, theirs is outdated. Well, you said something to me one time, not that long ago, about like everyone's living off of a decision they made one day and yep. maybe it was for five years ago, 10 years, whatever. And 
they're so like everything is about basically justifying that decision yep. that they might have made 10 years ago in some mm -hmm. cases and this could be the person who has a house to sell or needs to buy a home this could be an agent that is doing something that is not looking at an opportunity for investment for maybe a brokerage move or a team move or whatever but we're making these decisions every day based on this just this one decision we made one day five ten maybe 20 years ago yeah it was like a big deal so like when i bought this building right it was weird and scary because i never done that type of loan before i never got the kind of paperwork before i never through my company through individual yes right so when i did it it was a big deal i'm like oh my god look at that i'm like i'm living off the like oh look at this thing i got like how come i haven't done something more you know what i'm saying yes. what was i waiting for like i got it out of the way so so that's my question like I don't know how many houses you move a month, how many you list, how many people you recruit, whatever it is that you do. Is what you're doing up to your standard you're at today or is it up to what you thought was a good idea prior? And I'm gonna ask you to challenge yourself that today. You don't need to tell me right now, you don't post it in the box. Everybody acts like a big shot we're in front of everyone, right? But really think about that today. Is the level you're playing the level you're capable or what you've been playing? It's a very interesting concept. So you wanna talk recruiting, I'd love to. Yeah, of course. I always want to talk recruiting. Yeah, yeah. recruiting is powerful. Well, could be because leverage. In a way, it's it, it is leverage. Like it's taking. My buddy Brent always says it's like, okay, you could take a listing, and you you take a listing, you buy, it and it gets sold, and you get a paycheck. But like when you learn to recruit, it's like taking a listing that goes and gets ten more listings. Yep. Right. And so it's it is something that that is leverage. Whether we're talking about your team or your brokerage or I don't care what kind of company you might run a title company or a mortgage company, yep. it's the same thing. So it is, it's the ultimate leverage is to be able to recruit. And we're always recruiting if we're in sales yep. or we're always, yep. if we're influencing, we're recruiting, right? Yep. Is there a difference? Is recruiting um, just a no, bad all, word? All, uh, well, think about what is this thing recruiting? What does it mean? Um, yeah, I don't like the word recruiting. Let's just talk about that. Okay. Um, building a team. Building a team. I, I, here's okay. the thing. Like, I don't like the word friends. I hate the word friends. I can't stand the word friends. I, I hate it. Mark Zuckerberg screwed up that word. Like I have 5,000 people that pretend you. my friends, they're not my friends. I don't even know these people. Do you know what I'm they're saying? They're faking it. They're fake friends. So my best friends are on my team. So I'd rather have a team. Okay. And I, like I don't that. like family either because family is one of those words that like. You didn't get to choose. What's that? No, it's not that, but it's like, you got to go to a Thanksgiving or someone's house you don't really enjoy. Every one of you, you'd be lying to say, remiss to say that there's not two people in your life that are just family. So they could be on your family, my wife and my kids and my best friends, you're on my team. We're on right. each other's team. Yeah. My wife's on my team. Everyone in this room is on my team. You guys are on our team. I don't need friends. Friends is like this low level word of like Mark Zuckerberg. Like, oh, one little person, they click like, they're my friend. They're not me. I don't know you. Does that make sense? My friends, people that tell me the truth, they tell me what's going on. So the flip of words is massive. So is it we're recruiting maybe like a term we understand, but what are we really doing? Let's talk about it. Like what we're doing is we're building an army of people. They want to make a yes. difference in the world. So we're not really recruiting them to be in our business. We're looking for people that have a similar ideology that want to be part of something larger. Do you get this? Yeah. It's different than recruiting is, here's where recruiting is a problem. If you recruit them, you're done. And this is where most people screw up. Do you know when? Because I came out of direct sales network marketing years ago. They bring them in like, Kevin, yes. join me from this company. Come on. Oh, I got Kevin. And then you're done. You give up. It's yeah. over. Instead of, it's not recruiting. I want to build an army of people to make a difference in the world. And I want to develop people. So, so here's the deal. on the same team. People development. So I'm develop people. I get a waiter, a waitress, if they still have those in your town, right? Waiters and waitresses, they're great at direct sales. Remember back not, in the day? Not our California flat What's friends. Yeah, sorry. I think he opened up again. I don't Did know. they? I'm a crazy. Get, get rid of the crazy guy. But the, um, but the point is, I could say that openly. You're allowed to say it. You say whatever the hell I want. I keep thinking I have a microphone here. Um, so, so what's interesting is, um, if we look at it as developing people, okay. we meet somebody and we develop into our way of thinking. So I meet somebody from um, another company that starts with a K ends with a W. Right? Okay. You've heard of this company. Yeah. Right? Um, and you meet them and they're a good person and they've been doing 10, 15 houses a month. We develop them into someone who can do 30. We can develop them. So if we look at it as people development, and this is an interesting thing, like, and you have a, you could still call it recruiting to the outside world. You don't need to go tell people, oh, I'm more people development thing. <laughs> but like inside yourself, if you viewed it as I'm in the people development business, that means you meet somebody, you bring them on, you teach them, you educate, and you're responsible for them. So this is something from the Talmud, which is old. It says, when you save a life, you're responsible for it. And it's an old school terminology. And that's, so if you take somebody out of something, you are responsible for, for the results they get. They're yeah, ultimately sure. responsible to take ownership for what they're gonna do, right. but we've gotta be responsible for, for helping them. So as you bring them out of obscurity from another company, right. it is your responsibility to help them grow, train them, show them the way. 
most people give recruiting a bad rap because you bring somebody in, they don't make it work, screw them, who's next? So then we, so then we just create this like negative connotation around what the hell is that for me? What the hell oh, recruiting is, right? Because it's bad. We, yep. We we just walked away from them at a certain point. Yes. Or yes. they've been walked away from, or perhaps like that was the example that they had in their life. Like they got they got walked away from. They got recruited. Yep. And then left alone. So you can even tell people like, yes, we do recruit other agents, but really we have a people development program, which means we develop people that are better agents they're currently doing. So our job is whatever you did last year, we'd like you to do 15 to 20 percent more. That is our job. That is what we do. That's what we're here to do. You do the work, but we're here to show you the way. It's a different pitch. Recruiting means you're going to join me. You're going to use my business cards. Take my sign. That is different. It is different. We're going to work together as a team. Remember, people want to be part of something. I like that. So we're on a team. Yep. Well, that most people don't sell team. People want to be part of something. They want to be whatever team they want to be part of. They want to be part of it. If, you, if, if last year didn't teach you anything, people like teams. They love teams. They like right team, left team, up team, black team, uh, short team, yeah. big team. Everybody want to be part of a team. You guys know what I'm talking about. People want to be part of something and yeah. not just the title. So a team with inside of a team. Okay. So people want to be part of something. And I think that's true. Again, I'm going to go back to it, whether we're talking about in, our, in the real estate world, sales, or, yep. or recruiting, right? It's the same. Yep. People want to be a part of something else. And we've yep. got to, it's our job to help them see the way, to consult them or to train and coach them or guide yes. them along to whatever that next thing is for them. Yes. And that's what we need to be good at. Now, if you can produce a result and you know how to develop people, then recruiting is easy because you can show the results you've gotten. Okay. So now let's forget about whether we're talking about training or recruiting okay. or selling. Okay. How do we get good at that? Which part? the being able to bring people along the in, the influence people got to get good with people they, they, first you got to understand this one statement i'm going to say right now you may like this you may not because because this is the truth of everything is that communication is the most underdeveloped and underutilized asset that we have as human beings so here's how your paycheck grows here's how your check you get from the title company grows or from your agency grows is you become a person that can communicate and say it better than somebody else i just want to get point blank which is very un simple understanding you've got to get great at sharing what you do with people and saying in an eloquent way you don't have to be polished, but you got to get great with people. And how do we do that is you got to get time in the game, which means you got to spend time with people. So like you need it. So are you telling me like, I can't just read a book and, and then I just know how to you do it? You can't even use a script. It doesn't work that way. So I've got to, like, I, I literally need time in the game. I mean, it's, how involved do you want to be? I mean, this is very basic, but it's not. Um, you, this, is a, this is a misnomer. And this is where this market is a really big misnomer because somebody will be in Scottsdale and they'll sell three houses this year. Let's just get out of recruiting. They'll sell yeah. three houses at a million dollars, make 3% commission, make a hundred grand in three houses and go, oh my God, I'm good at this. No, you're not good at this. You caught it at the right time. You are not good at this. You're better than nobody, but you're not good at this yet. You're good at this if in five years you're still doing it. Yeah. So, okay. There, I got a lot to We're unpack. going all over the place. And then let's get their questions. Yeah, too, guys, so. if you got questions, sales, influence, anything. Or anything you want to know. Average sucking, We whatever. can cover anything sales-wise, influence-wise. Do ask. So, okay. So we got we to gotta learn to, to influence ourselves is what I'm hearing, first mm -hmm. of all. Right? And the way we do that is like we actually got to go practice. So we got to yep. practice with ourselves. And we got to get time in the game with others, too, yep. to, to help them. Because here's, what, here's the experience I have, right? talking to agents all over the place and it's not limited to real estate but since that's where we're all at just give me the script and yeah let, let me just try i'm going to train how to do it but i think what i heard you say was like no go do it basically screw up get better learn what works yep. where you need to tweak it and then get yep. that and keep doing that so you gotta practice you gotta do more yes so let's let me analyze this real quickly um am i able to write on these boards okay so i'm able to write on these boards okay the reason i ask if i'm able to write physically i know i can write but i just have to ask like are they in the glare okay so this is what most people are after okay kevin everybody wants a plan this is what they come into the st worst thing you can give anybody is a plan our brain's natural tendency is to look for a plan like i want to be really clear everybody Getting in great shape, making money, running a Zoom is all over Google. You seven ways to do this, six ways to do this, 10 ways to do that, 80 ways to do this, seven ways, six ways, four ways, three ways, two ways, one. They're everywhere. Kevin wanted to fast for years, knew it was a good idea, had the plan. It's easy. Everybody wants a plan. That is not where you start. And the reason you don't start there is because it doesn't work. Because who you are, the new plan doesn't work. What you need to do is you've got to learn how to take action. This is the secret. How do you pick up the phone? How do you suck? How do you take action with any plan 
at all. Because here's the deal. You don't even know if you like this. This is why we show people houses. Get in the car. Let's go look. Let's go do. Repetition. Get in the car. Just action. Any action. So let me explain this. Uh, the military. I studied a lot of military folks. And what I realized, all great plans were written in blood. Anyone in the military knows what I'm talking about. We do these things because they like all the laws that are set out there are because it didn't work out before. So what happens is once you find something that works, I call people on Tuesdays at three o'clock and I say blank and it works, then you start to develop momentum. Now, what's interesting about this is once you develop momentum, it's like, I'm doing this, I'm moving three houses a year, six houses a year. Now you're like, okay, how can I do this automatically? You should then put a plan in place once you know it's working. Are you getting this? Okay, so action creates results, which then helps me build momentum. As long as I keep acting, make, taking action. Then build a plan. And then I build a plan. How to have momentum. But everybody wants a damn plan. I know. So here's the plan, get started. Do anything. That's the so plan. Let me give an example. We're talking investing right now, okay? Which I understand greatly. Is the first thing I do is open up an E-Tray account or go get your first rental property. Go screw it up. Just do something. Just get in there, be willing to screw it up. Once you found something that worked, ah, this is working. I'm starting to understand this, then develop a plan. The next step is resources. This is influence, sales, scripts, betterment, all that. It's on the other, like after we got a plan, we polish it, we get new tires, we get better at it, all that kind of stuff. So most people have figured this out. So we just got to get people moving. Once they're moving, stuff happens. You getting this? This yeah. is where people screw up. Every, our natural predisposition as human beings is to look for a plan. But here's the deal. If plans worked, everybody would be rich and wealthy and great bodies and feeling awesome and, and everything will be going good. Plans don't do anything for people if you're not a person that can act on them. So we got to act, make sure it works, then develop the plan better. Did you just say plans don't work if you're not a person that can act on it? Yeah, I said that. I, I love Well, that. just go to Google. Like, let me ask you this. Like, uh, how do I do whatever? Uh, if I go to Google, like, give me something. Um, how to recruit agents, right? Yeah. How to recruit agents. Okay. And everyone's going to sell you a plan. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to skip to like an actual real website, right? Oh, you're not how to recruit, plans. how to recruit insurance agents to your downline. Oh, okay. Very good. Cool. So I'm going to go here and it says here, it says, um, uh, characteristics to look for, uh, perks to offer. And it's all right here. It's free. Anybody that wants to do that can do that, but that's not how it works. Here's it's the not question. The step by step plan. No. The first step is go do something. How many conversations did you have? Or just do something, do anything, go screw up. It's like, you just got divorced, go on a date. You're not gonna like the person. Probably the wrong person for you. Just go, go on a date. Then you maybe get married again, if you wanna get married again. Not, not like the next day, but- No, like just, just yeah. go on a date, a stop like, first. oh my God, how do I find the right person? There's the it's like, we build these fantasies and that's what plans are, the fantasies. Because they don't really work. Mike Tyson said it best. If you, everyone's got a good plan until, until they get punched, punched in, the in the face. So your plan's stupid. Just accept, I have a stupid plan. Everyone's got a stupid plan. You know, they do. We do. We all do. Because it, what happens is they they adjust. I, I talk often about like the plan Fred and I use for our real estate, what I call our real estate mm -hmm. sales team model. Yep. It's changed like four times, like dramatically yep. in the, oh, dude, by the way, happy anniversary, Fred, in the uh, 13 years happy since we've Fred. been working together. Seriously, I, it, like dramatic, yeah, like dramatically it's changed at least four times. Like we had a plan and then it was like, then it wasn't the best what plan. What about March 1st last year, you had a plan? Yeah, we had a plan, absolutely. And, and by the way, on April 1st, we're like, what the fuck is gonna happen now? And then did you make a plan or just got doing something? We just kept going, we just started doing things. So the thing that gets you started is just to do something, do anything, it doesn't matter what it is, just, just, be, just do something and if it works, and do something until you find something that works. And then when we find something works, make a plan how to make it more automatic or get people involved or ask somebody to hold it for you. You know, you know what I mean? Dude, we're so programmed to just think about, I need the plan first. And I think what you're saying, like that's gold. I hope you guys wrote that down. That's why they can't sell their house because they want to know what's going to happen first. They need the plan. They need to go see other houses. They need to understand. They need to look, feel, see. We have to get them out of what they're doing. They don't need a plan. They think they need a plan. They're like, oh my God, I got a plan right now. My story's off, right? Like they're confused. All right, that's why so they can't sell a buy. Am I wrong in thinking that You're if that's wrong. the case, action, momentum, plan, resources, like the first thing I need to do is I need to work on my action yep. so that way I know what yep. my actions and my momentum looks like yep. so I can actually walk someone else through the yep. same process, whether it be a recruit or a buyer or a seller or an investor. 
I would say to you, the first thing I'd want to know is figure out what your metrics are. I'd want to figure out where you're at. Like, what are, you, what are we dealing with? So I'd bring you onto the team. I'd say, all right, go make a hundred calls. Let me know what happens. What do I say to them? Just go call them. Just, just, just go call, like say this, just, just So call you're not going to hand them a script book first. No, I'm going to give them like, no, I'm going to give them like, just go call. Like if they've never called anybody, just call people and say, hi. Efren, I was thinking about you. Yeah, Efren is on my team. I see him every day in Tempe. He is, he's absolutely starting to really kick butt in real estate, but he's like, he did. He won't like, he didn't need the script. He was just like, What's I'm going to go. What's the script going to do? He, nothing. Did you really need a script? No. Who I mean, I script? learned scripts later and that was great and helped me. The scripts me, but is like, the resources later. You need a yeah. little bit like, what do I say when I get on the phone? Well, you're going to talk about real estate. Yeah. And here's the other thing is like, stop recruiting people that really shouldn't be in sales. This is the Ooh. thing. That, like, this is, let's get really real. Like, if they, there's a certain kind of person, right? Can we be really just blunt? Yeah. Can you say this stuff in 2021? I'm allowed to. Certain people are able to do certain things naturally and other people have to take the time to develop. It's just what they do. I'm six foot six. I am not meant to ride a horse. Does that make sense? I'm not. I'm meant to hurt you. Like, could you imagine me like the Kentucky Derby on a horse? No. I'm bigger than the horse, right? It's just picture that right now. Like I'm not supposed to. Now I'm supposed to play basketball, but I like basketball. I like hockey. Right, but you so, could be big for hockey, right? Like that's yeah. Cool. But nowadays, but when I was a kid, you had to be five six and fast, and they hated those jerks. But the point is, um, but the point is, uh, where I'm going with this is like we've got to like look for personality types. We like fall in love with people's potential. Like I'll take anybody I can get. No, we need to find people that are predisposed that that's what they do. Like they're natural. I'll teach one day this personality thing that I learned years ago. I'll teach that another lesson we do. Okay. But like their traits we're looking for. Like we were just at the shop and it's like their personality, these people, they can do anything. They can handle things. They can think quick. Like you bring in people, oh, you'd be good at real estate. They don't like to speak. They don't like people. They don't like it's money. It's going to be hard. Like you might bring them on your team. What are they going to do? You're going to waste your time and their time. You know, people do this, right? Absolutely. Look at me. I got a great team. I got a hundred people. Great. How active are they? Well, they're not. Great. You and your hundred people go have fun. I got two people that kick ass. Dude, I, oh man, I love that. I just want to say real quick before we go forward, I know we only have a few minutes left. Action, momentum, plan, resources. Like if you took only that away, that's fucking huge. Yep. That's huge. Resources is like tightening things up. Like how do I word a listing correctly? That's resources. That's like, like Take we don't action, even though. need to talk about that yet. Do you know what I'm saying? Take action. Take a So take action and like go, go, go get punched in the face, right? This is yeah. Efren who, who, who chimed in and said, this is great. He was willing to, and he did. He kept getting punched in the face and you know what? He kept getting better and better. And now he's got a business that is, has momentum. Yep. And he's now worked more on a plan. Yep. And that's, like so you don't even know effort, that's why like I think real estate. You, like go sell a house, make zero dollars on it, give it away, see if you even like it. Do, do you understand? I'm not yeah. recommending that. Yeah, but I'm no, saying I hear what if you've got to take your first sale and going, listen, buddy, I will give you all of my commission. I don't know if it's legal. I I, I don't know what's legal, what's not, but just who cares? Go through the transaction, do the thing, get it done. At least you did it. And afterwards, you're like, you know what? I like that. Next time I'll get paid. But the point is, at least you did it. Yeah. What if you don't like it? Like, I don't like paperwork at all. Like, I could never be a mortgage person. I don't like paperwork. It would annoy you. me. I couldn't do it. You know why I'd never be a real estate agent? For me, I couldn't do it. I'd have trouble with it. The, the, test. the testing. I couldn't you. do it. Yeah. I would make gazillions. I'll let you do it. You make the gazillions, and then we'll go from there. But I make gazillions. The test, it's just not my thing. Don't even bother me, because I'm never going to take the test. It's not my thing. I totally get it. No, I, I, t I totally get that. So... God, guys, I love, okay, we only have a few more minutes left. So if you have a question about that or anything else, but I want to drive that home again. Yep. Action. I don't, what's, what, what, what's moving about it? You I, keep on saying the four words, but what, what are you getting about this? What am I getting about this is even like, so Fred and I, we've built this complicated training system and I want to, I want to take all the thinking out of it. But the problem, I think what that's now created is we've got to just take action first and allow everyone to start to think for themselves and build their momentum because that's actually where the training should be once they get to the point of plan. Training is never going to work ever. Does that make sense? So what I want to um, what I want to think about this right now is that you when can't you... train someone into it. Okay, let me ask you a question. Were you ever not good at sales your whole life? Even no, your never. When you even when kid, I thought I did, I even, even when you were shy when you were kid. Even when I didn't want to be in sales because it was a bad word to me, I was good at it. Yep. So here's the deal. You can't train anybody better. You can train them to be better when they're going. You can't train them from still. 
So here's the deal. The first week, we're going to call 100 people. We're going to get our heads punched in. We're going to call some. And if they're not willing to do that, let's not even bother with it. Now, granted, if you want to study scripts, do it in your own time at home. Does that make sense? Yeah. But here, here, here's what I'm getting at is if they're not willing to pick up the phone, knock on doors, do whatever it is that needs to get done, it's never going to work. So part of it is requiring people that like are go-getters. They're, they've already been through that whole thing. If we're like, oh, how do I get them to be pick up? Like, you're in the wrong business. Like if you don't like people, you're or not like gonna make like, someone if, something else. No, th that's not recruiting. That's like, uh, that's wishful thinking. <laughs> that's my belief. I mean, I think you should be bringing on people that natural tendencies. They love people to pick up the phone. It's natural for them. So, what if? Let me ask you this. And I'm. This is a setup, by the way, because I want you to tell us about the average sucks yep, challenge. Yep. So this is a total setup. Heads up, I'm about to sell you something for free. <laughs> okay. Actually, I don't know if you can really sell something. I don't know what the no, technical word is. So I'm about to tell you how to get something amazing for free um, that I paid a lot of money for, by the way, a long time ago. I like to sell him things. So, so here. Okay. So let's say if I'm going to do the action, if I have a team of people, I want people through that. I've got to be able to get myself through that first. Yep. What if I need help with that? Like, is that something that you can help? Is there training on how to help me take more action? Like, is yeah. there like, can you punch me in the, in the face? Every I, don't, day I, don't, I, go? I don't punch you in the face. It's not that violent. I have a plan that I've learned for 17 years that I know works that I activate on a regular basis to get okay. you to do this. But it's something you've been using in yeah, your for life. So bottom line is if you can get people to take action, in one area of their life, they feel good in all areas of life. This is why exercise is so important. When you exercise, you usually make more money because you feel better about yourself. You know, if you over-exercise because it's your addiction and you spend 15 hours a day at the gym, you're probably not making money because you're hiding from something. That's a different thing. So if you can, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So if you can right. get yourself moving, that's why that guy with the book, Make Your Bed, did you see that book? Like if you actually make your bed first thing in the morning, yeah. I do it now. It's just, it's silly as it is. Like if you can't make your but bed for win. two minutes, yeah. it's a win before you get started. The cold showers, to do something uncomfortable to start the day. Pick a thing, whatever it is that motivates you and moves you. I'll tell you guys about it in a couple of seconds, but that is what I do. I get people to take action. And I do it through challenging what your status quo is. And what's cool about it is it's a couple hours a day for five days. So people are like, oh, I don't have the time. Well, then you don't have the time to be successful. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if you can't, if you can't find a couple hours a day. I'm be, I'm, but I'm well, busy but being busy successful. Calls. Great. We sharpen the ax. We make you more confident. But here's the cool part. You're going to, two things are going to happen. One is you're going to learn from me really cool stuff. I'm going to give this to you guys for free as part of this community. I'm going to give it away for free. And you can share it with at least three people. I recommend you do it. You should grow together. It's a chance to get a copy of the book and one of my shirts also in there as well. Um, they really? Can, yeah, we, we, it's silly when you say it. I realize the shipping department's going to lose a whole bunch of money, but we're going to be sending You just pissed off somebody on your but, staff. Yeah. But, um, but the point is, um, if you're interested in it, I'll give it to you in just a second. I'll give you the website. But this is, this is the, the crux of, of the whole thing is if you can take a couple minutes. Like I said this at an event the other day. This is, this is what I got to applaud everyone for being here right now. My friend, Alice Maslin, we were talking on our call and I said, she's got an event coming up. And I said, if you show up at the event and put earplugs in and don't pay attention for three days and just like, it's all day, all night. Like you're, you're just, just there. A couple, you're just there. You're like there, distracted. The fact that you stopped doing what you do regularly and did anything different while you're being distracted with your whatever in your ears and pretending you're at the event, you stop doing what you normally do. Been there. Yeah. You've been there. been there. While you're there, your brain's going to go, I got an idea. And you're going to come up with one better idea than you ever would have doing what you normally do. Dude, it's a fact that I, yes. Go for a walk. You being here today yes. gets me to come up with three things I never thought of to get me to do something different. So whenever you do something different, you change your average. And when you change what you do regularly, what happens immediately for all of you is you open up your mind. So I always tell everybody, even if the event, you don't like it, you don't pay attention, you ignore me, you ignore it. Just the fact that you're not doing what you normally do that day, you'll come up with through new ideas because you change your biochemistry. Whenever you go for a run, yeah, everyone knows as you go for a walk, you always come up with a good idea. Yeah. Why? Because your biochemistry has changed. So here's why events and why you being here, I consider this an event, being here for an hour gets you out of what you normally do, thinking differently for 60 freaking minutes. That's it. Your brain goes, I got three ideas. I'm gonna do one thing different. I'm gonna go to make a post. Some of you make a post. Hey, I just got done with Michael Burnoff sharing this thing with Kevin Kaufman. It was absolutely amazing. Next level agent, make sure to recommend the group. And while I was there, uh, while, while I was there, um, I learned this thing. There's no such thing as a market crash. There's just recalibration because crash means gone completely. It's never crashed ever. The market has never crashed. The market has never, ever crashed. Crashed means exploded and gone. Never, I'll prove it, never. Ne I feel like Gary Vee right now. Never totally in the history of the right world now. has the market ever crashed completely. Your house can crash. 
It can go to the ground and get dynamited. That's different. Yeah. But it's different. That's a real crash. The crash that we're talking about is psychological. It's a term. So um, did you want me to mention the challenge them now? Dude, but average, I want to get a question from them. I want to talk. Yeah. So guys, question. Uh, Illich asked one about the personalities. I don't know if we have time to cover uh, that Next one, session, I'm going to cover that. I'll spend a half hour on it. We'll go deep into that, okay? Another question, guys, about something we covered today. And then I'll give you the challenge. I'm not giving you anything. I'm going to have it on the screen here Somebody in a better second. ask a question. Better ask a question. Dean, about anything. Illich, You Efren, guys are smart. Randy, and if Fred. anyone drops off before it, we're coming for you. Ask a question. Kevin knows where you live. Ask any question about anything. Too, I Folks, I, on a serious note, I answer questions in this room for Kevin hired me years ago when we became friends uh, to do personal coaching. I'm not a cheap date. And he had a million questions because he was paying. Pretend you paid 10,000 bucks to be here right now. So ask the question, anything you want to know about recruiting, selling. And I'm not just like, oh, a positive guy. Like I got ninja, voodoo, wizard, crazy, strange stuff. What you got? Yeah, ask it. So we'll be quiet. So type it think. into the chat. Um, Dude, speaking of, every time you say voodoo ninja, I think of the color thing. Which one? Of like changing a, changing a past. Like, oh yeah, that's cool. Oh, dude. We take, we take people's day. major issues in their life and get rid of them like that. So I'll if you can forget that. I, I know where I was walking in the city of Tempe yep. when you walked me through that. I know where I was time. walking too. I was outside pacing while we were doing that. Oh, dude, I'll never forget. All right, we got a question from Daniel. How do you get someone to take the initial action? Uh, Daniel, which action? Is that we talk because there's a lot of things you got to get someone to pee. It's real easy. Just feed them water and they'll go pee. So what do you, which action, Daniel? Yeah, expand on that for us, buddy. Action to make the phone call. Okay. Okay, so it's all about framing. Um, we make the phone more scary than it is. Uh, my wife and I were talking for years. I, we, everyone's got people in their life that we, and then make sure you remember Illich's uh, thing. Did I say it right, Illich? Yeah. Dude, I'm good at words. Okay, good at names. So um, we make the phone scary. It's a phone. So we'd say our company doesn't believe in cold calling. And the reason we don't believe in cold calling is it's warm here in Arizona. We don't call anybody. It's cold. What we do is we put the leads in the oven. We warm them up. So I'm just joking right now. What we're going to do is we're going to practice connecting. That's all we're going to do is we're practice connecting. There's no big outcome. The whole outcome is we're just going to connect with people practice and see connecting. if we can connect. We're practice connecting. So that's all we're going to do. Holy so shit. Write our that goal, down. So practice connecting. We think, look at, the, look at the fear of this person. They're like, I got to go from picking up the phone, which has got all the fear, like an old school phone or like that a current old phone. School, yeah. Current phone. Just like with a little button or nipple down there, right? Okay, like phone the old ones, right? Phone nipple. Yeah. Uh, all the way to sell shit. That's a big step. That is a big step. It's a giant, that's a leap. If they, now here's who does that, natural salespeople. Right. I would do that. I'd get on the phone, sell something, make it work, no problem. The new person, never done it before, making phone calls, there's three phases. Connecting, the first thing we do is connecting. Number two is setting up the next phone call. That's all we're gonna do is just set up an appointment. This is all, um, I don't want to say Jordan Belfort, but that's what he taught. It's like I've baby known, steps. I've though. known Jordan for a long time, and that's what he taught people back in the day. Um, he was good at sales. I wish they sold something a little more legit back then. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they were good at sales. You know what they taught people? Pick up the phone. We're going to practice setting the next appointment. So that's all they're going to do. We're just going to call somebody and see if they can see if I can keep them on the phone for three minutes. That's it. That's all we're going to do. Play a little game called How Long Can I Keep This Person on the Phone? We're just going to practice. You're going to change the game. You're going to make it fun. Do you understand? That's it. Yes. You're going to make it fun. That's how we get people started who have fear and phobia around it. Other people, you just got to set the expectations. Expectations minus reality equals disappointment. Write that down. Expectations minus reality equals disappointment. I expect to close every sale. Then you expect that you will be frustrated permanently. Okay? Right. Expectations minus reality. What's reality? Let them know reality. In this group of people we're going to call, somebody wants to give you 20 grand. We just don't know who they are. It's like three card money. Somebody in these 100 people we're calling wants to give you 30 grand. Let's practice saying hi. Dude. Does that help? Yeah. Change the expert. You're making it scary. Okay, we're going to call people today. Shit. Call people today. But you're saying like, let's just connect. Like, let's, let's practice call, let's, connecting. We're going to practice connecting. That's all we're going to do. And expectation wise, there's no mean people out there, but some people have bad days. We've got the ability to connect with people. So I'm going to say hi. We say who we are. We're going to practice. And if that's all you get out, you get a win today. Get a sticker. Read a couple of the questions. That's solid. All right. Uh, so, okay. It's so, let's screen. Illich brought up, brought up last, last webinar we did in December. Uh, we talked about people who they don't want to be wrong, right? Because if they make a change, sell the house, move the, move the brokerage. Yep. How, how, well, his question is how do we get them to see another perspective and not that they were wrong? Give me an example of how they think they're wrong. Stick with us, folks. We got, we're going to go, I'm going to go five minutes over. I'm going to go into my lunchtime. Go ahead. All right. So, how, well, Scooby Doo lunchbox. Dude, but I, I'm, I'm wearing this other jersey. 
right for this yeah. other team and so if i take that off that i was wrong like i was at the i was on the wrong team okay so um one of the biggest reasons people stay in situations they're in is because at one point it was a good idea okay i'm not saying it's a bad idea right now but at one point it was a good idea part of the transition of anything you want in this life is you can't climb a ladder without taking your step up the, the step you're currently on like we just get comfortable so what you're doing isn't wrong. You can continue doing it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's like, do you want something different? And that's the question. I want to just show you this. You should not leave unless you're looking for something different. Let me ask you a question. Are you bored at all in life right now? Sometimes we just got to do something different. Most people are bored, very bored. Are you getting this? Does yeah. that help you? I believe that'll help. I think it does. I got a couple more questions. All right. Uh, Denine asked me, how did you get first call sharing EXP? What's the best thing you've learned? Honestly, he just talked about the best thing. I'm so Denine asked, for those of you not reading the chat, what's the best thing I've learned after all we've done to build a group inside of EXP about, of a 900 agents? Was it easier doing it with Fred? Yeah, it's always, that's why I have a business partner. Everything's better with Fred. Right. No, no. It's not true? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. That's I can't go that far. Okay. That said, what I, what I what actually <laughs> everything Deneen, in EXP is better with Fred. Yeah, there we go. With our real estate business, Denine, actually, what Michael wrote with the action, and then the momentum, that was actually what I've learned. I've learned that a lot over the last four or five months in different lessons, yep. and he just said it concisely in a way that just hit me like a ton of bricks. So if anybody I've talked to on the phone over the last like five days, literally, who's asked me about recruiting. I've actually brought it back to something so simple that really starts with action. And I just didn't realize it for so long. So that's it. And then I had to learn, I had to practice connecting with people. It's, it's, a, big, it's a big step in the right direction. I know we're time-wise, I'm gonna answer these other questions. I did wanna pop this on the board. Someone's gonna type this in the group, this website. I made it really big so you can see it for the challenge. I believe it's here um, on the board. Is it, is it, yeah, here we go. All there right. Uh, is it on, oh, there we go. Okay, averagesuckschallenge.com. Um, Someone type it in. The average sucks challenge. I believe it's the. Is it the? Is it the, the or is it average, average sucks? sucks? I may not have a, a the. Just type in average sucks challenge.com. Get rid of, drop the, get rid of the, the V. Put in average sucks challenge.com. I don't think the V is in it. Just average sucks challenge.com. Someone put that in the group. Check it out without the the. Um, the the just sounds better, it but, does, it, but you won't take it's you like anywhere. The so Facebook. The, the, the Facebook. Um, you could decide if it's next week. It's in this room, it's Thanks a couple hours a day for five days on Zoom. It is gonna be fun, inspiring, incredible. If you want to, when you go to like, after you register, you can invite anybody you want. We have a max amount of people we're gonna have. So if you wanna invite them, invite them right away, averagesuckschallenge.com. Do enroll if you're excited about it. You're getting me live absolutely free on the second page. If you want to get a copy of the book and a shirt, there's a little VIP thing with a little more time with me. I think it's like 30 bucks or 39 bucks if they want it. So seriously, um, that's, yeah, it? If that's it. So if they want it, we lose money on that, but that's my indicator of I'll work with serious people. Dude, you've, you've, the you've, book's $24. you've done a five day class though for 500 bucks for 500 bucks for ever yeah. without zoom, without the expensive cameras. So are you telling me if I invested 30 or 40 What's bucks, free? I could get the class, the shirt, and the book and, and extra time with me and extra time. Yeah. But it's a COVID type thing, like from last year, COVID, like it's like, hey, we learned a little model. Sometimes we got to sweeten the pot. So this is like including when you're selling a house to somebody, including the paint. I would actually say that is number one, ridiculous and would be irresponsible to not take advantage yeah. of it. So tell a few people on your team about it. AverageSucksChallenge.com, like open up your text, say, hey, dude, I'm doing this. You should do it. If you're going to take the time to watch the video and you've been here with me for an hour, feel free to do that, but learn about yourself. I want to know all the details. That means you're a plan person, not an action person. I will say this too, real quick, because I've had, so not uh, the average sucks challenge, but the call to action, right? I have sent, I can't, I've lost count of how many people thousands. of friends, acquaintances, people on my team through it. And never once has anybody ever come back and said that wasn't amazing. Like, it allows you, myself included, and Fred, who is the har harshest critic I know of events Fred or learning, me. he dude, he not only did he do that, he did, he went into the next one and yeah. then did it again. Yep. And so, like, I, yes, yeah, I, I would EverSuchChallenge.com. Do I'd it. Enroll now. Take you two minutes. Name, email, let us know, text. We'll send out stuff. We're going to open up the group here later today. Starts next week. Well, I don't have time next week. Make time or show up when you can. Um, and then I would take advantage of the book and the stuff. So you got it. If you already got a copy, you can give one away to somebody. Which um, you should, trust me. Did you want to answer one more question? Let's do one and more then question. I can, then go. I got to run. All right. So it's lunch more time. of a, a Chewbacca more, lunchbox. So this is more of a share. Randy said, life is like a series of expectation setting. Yeah. 
expectations minus reality is disappointment. Like most people, I think I said this last time, I don't know if it was yours or someone else said more divorces are caused by Disney than anything else. Did I say that with you guys? No, you said something similar, but different. Okay. Yes. Disney creates divorce because Disney creates an, a fantasy in a six-year-old girl's head about what a wedding looks like or a marriage or something. Do you get this? And yeah. it's like this complete irrational concept. So it's like, oh, you know, wedding is like white horses and everything. It's like, they got paid for that stuff, right? And then your wedding becomes like this starting point, like, oh, the greatest day of my life, right? Yeah. And if it's the greatest day of your life, you're gonna be miserable afterwards. So that like, means like you can only go down if it's the greatest day. Yeah, I'm not, yes. I'm not saying don't have ridiculous expectations. Some days are Disney. Some, Some days. days are Rocky two or Rocky three, where it's real bad. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Some days are Rocky four and you're training in Russia. It's, it's like- uh, it's a study. Show okay, so Monica, by the way, is Disney a big Disney fan. I, You're right, Monica. She's correct. She's but she right. understands what I'm talking about. She does. Um, I love Disney. And Disney makes you feel good. And I own Disney stock, a lot of it. So I've made a lot of money on Disney. I love Disney. Do you think you're going to uh, buy like Roku or something like that? Yeah, they're going to do something. Yeah. Else. Who knows? Um, I, I love Disney. Don't get me wrong. I am just saying people's fantasy of agents and what it does. Like, oh, I'm going to be like Kevin and Fred. Like, okay get a camera, follow around Kevin and Fred for a couple of days, watch what they really do, the stresses, the ups and downs, and then you can decide if you really want to do it or not. Most people say, I want to do what you do, Michael. Okay, well, let's go back in time. No, you only just want to see right now with this little, uh, the, it'd be like an iceberg, you'd see the tip of it, you yeah. would not see the whole thing under the water. You see, I mean, anyway, that, that's, that's the thing. So yeah, I, Monica, she gets it. I, Mon I know Monica. Monica I know Monica. She's I? awesome. She's got your book. Yeah, I know Monica. She thought, is funny story, we'll end on this, I sent her the book. She glanced at it, new baby in the house said she thought it said America sucks and she's like wow that's shitty timing and then and then she went back and look at it vote oh, she's like I got well rested I'm like I don't know how is that possible you be well rested you still have a newborn in the house and she's like no really well rested read, look at the book cover again it says average sucks and then wow. she wrote now she read it and said love the book yeah I, I, pre I appreciate that and the greatest way to get the book is through the challenge because it comes with the shirt and everything else sure too um the one thing I was going to tell you guys is America has become average. I'll just be point blank. Um, we don't have to be average. We need to get above average as people. Yeah. Not even political, none of that stuff. It's like we have been trained to be average and we need to get above average. That's our big thing is like, if you care about your kids, your country, the world, one of the things we can do is play outside the box and show other people be examples. Yes. Right now it's either you become the example of a higher play or Kim Kardashian becomes your kid's hero. And I prefer Kevin and Fred as role models versus Kim Kardashian. That's just my take. I don't know what you think. Uh, and Kim Kardashian doesn't make you live longer. I promise you. So um, last share, and then we're, we're ending on this. Jennifer, thank you. Great share. She said, I'm, I'm in invested and committed feeling called out because I'm a planner. I need more details for everything. And today I just jumped in pretty excited. Jennifer, that's awesome. I'm so excited for you. I can't wait to talk to you in two weeks right after you finish the Average Sucks Challenge. Yeah, it's a couple hours a day. It's like, uh, you want details because you're a detail person, which you sell yourself on that idea, which is great. We're going to get you less needing that so you can be more of an action taker. We're going to get you out of so that. Good. So one of the things I do is I turn down, I always tell them like, put the finger in there and turn down your overthinking. Overthinking is like, being analytical is a way of living. It's a personality. Right. Overthinking sure. is point blank. You're freaking scared and you're sabotaging your future. So we take people's overthinking and we, we, we ratchet it down. Bring it down a little so bit. So break it down a little bit. So you can feel comfortable making decisions. We get comfortable with each other. So that's what she wants. So a couple hours a day for next week. Block off like two and a half. I know I say two because afterwards you want a minute to yourself and block off three. You I'm might say when like, you're done, give yourself a buffer when you're relax. done, you don't want to run to an appointment. When you're done, take a minute, have your chai tea, whatever it is, your water, calm your ass down, whatever, be ready to go. But it's going to be so fun. It's going to be energetic. I guarantee your workouts are going to be better next week. Your energy is going to be better next week. You're going to feel better. Uh, you're going to, appointments are going to be better. Your calls are going to be better. Uh, it's going to be incredible. And here's the cool part. I've never done that challenge before. You're going to be our beta test, which everything I do is going to be incredible. So we've never done that before. All right, dude. So we got to run. Guys, yeah. do me a favor. Average Sucks Challenge. Share that with at least two other agents that you know. Get them in there. Learn. Grow together. Yep. And then can we come back and do this? Yeah, game? I want to do personalities? personalities and how to sell to the right people. And you're going to want to get other members of your team on this because when I teach it, the office will change. So Fred's allowed to come. Or we should not Fine. teach it. I'll bring them. To Fine. Okay. All right. Fred. See you guys next time. Take care. Thanks for joining us, guys. AverageSlexChallenge.com. See if we can figure out how to close this. Yeah. There we go. I hate when the screen goes big. <laughs>